Truly a one of a kind in the making. Mob of the Dead was monumental for zombies. During those times where everyone thought zombies was done and it wasn't coming back, Die Rise just came out, obviously, and people weren't excited. They didn't like it. So they were like, all right, let's go into the booth. Boom, came out with Mob of the Fucking Dead. There's just so many reasons as to why this map is so great and so fun to play. Its replayability is slim to none, like you can do it over and over again. Even though it all ends sometimes the same way, I mean, you can take as many routes as you want to start this game. And honestly, I mean, what more could you ask for? It's definitely a challenge. Like, look at this gameplay right here. Intense, tight as hell. I mean, what more can you ask for? Electric Cherry, the new perk they brought in, doing its thing right here. I mean, you got a first time specialist weapon in the Tomahawk. I mean, come on. What is there not to love about this map? It is just super, super fun. Sure, there could have been things better that they could have done, but like, think about it. You don't have that many things that you can give them besides maybe the plane parts, having to grab them all the time, yada, yada, yada. Overall, it's just perfection. Say what you want. I mean, the map does have flaws, but it shines more than anything. And things like this, the mystery box, I mean, I got a death machine in my hands. Yeah, the ammo sucks, but that's besides the point. It's new, it's in the game, it's out of the box, and it's not a drop. So what does that mean? More max ammos. Duh. Doesn't everybody want that shit? Besides the fact of extra max ammos, of course, there's also free drops in jail cells that you can just grab with your tomahawk and not even have to open up the goddamn cell. And then right here, you are about to see me have the wonder weapon twice. The acid gat and the blunder gat. Whoa, you can be technical about it, patrol withering, yada yada, whatever. But it doesn't matter. You can still get two of these wonder weapons. And it's super rare. Most maps, you know, not even most maps. In some maps you can glitch and maybe get two if you're lucky. Two if you're lucky. But this is the only map where you can just go crazy with both wonder weapons at the same time. As you can see in the gameplay right here, it is so so crazy so bizarre i mean you could just spam both of them left and right tons of ammo and it's all, like i said just a whole lot of fun now mob of the dead is very challenging for the very normal average zombies player you know they're looking to go maybe 20 25 rounds at the most so obtaining most of these things are very doable and hell you can get pretty far with using just the hell's redeemer and acid gat alone but you gotta think that it was very challenging for its time. It was the first time ever where you have interactables in maps that aren't just building something. You're going around and turning on literally every part of the map. Now, with that being said, Mob of the Dead got rid of Quick Revive and experimented with this new thing called Afterlife, which for me, and I'm sure most of you, was a major success. With solo players now having three chances at survival, if used correctly, and as well as in multiplayer games, everybody has an afterlife and is dependent on themselves for their first down of the round. Unfortunately, for multiplayer though, it does not stack, but that does not matter because with multiple people, multiple things will be getting done. Same thing for solo. With multiple afterlifes, you will be using these to your advantage early on. Now, why is this important, you may be asking yourself? Because it's teaching us to get teamwork and to be efficient. A lot of maps just kind of stuck you in there and said, all right, just play this bitch. This map, you need to have a strategy or else you're gonna be having a very tough time. It's just that simple. So in a sense, Afterlife literally taught us to be good zombies players, you know? Because without us learning how to be efficient, we're not closing that gap of getting to those high rounds of 30, 40, 50, even 100. This map in specific isn't known for its high rounds, although it does have some amazing records held on it. You can't deny the fact that 
this map is a beginner's like masterpiece if you're learning how to play a tough zombies map for the first time and you're struggling in black ops 3 you come over to black ops 2 and play mob of the dead you feel pretty good about yourself after the game. You actually know what's going on. There's a challenge, but the challenge isn't too great. You can handle things. Some people are genuinely just not good at zombies and should just put the game down, which most of them have, which is also why the community is as small as it is anyway. But at the end of the day, this map had the peak zombies community since it was just so simple. I mean, everything was laid out right in front of you from afterlife. Jumping into Black Ops 3, yet it is an amazing game. That first map, Shadows of Evil, it is not nowhere near the same as Mob of the Dead. Now these two can be compared hand in hand with the beast mode and the afterlife, but at the end of the day, they're very different things. As because in afterlife, you can go down if you do not get back to your body in time. Which isn't the case for Mob of the Dead a lot of the times, but still. This map opened up a lot of people's minds into zombies as to what it could be and what it has the potential to be. As we saw later on in the future, we saw a lot more complex maps because of the fact that Mob of the Dead was so simple in its complexity. Yes, as I said before, the gameplay can get very intense, but all in all, you have complete control of every situation because of the wonder weapon. It literally is a shooting monkey bomb, aka it's like the crossbow from Black Ops 1. You shoot it, and then they get attracted to it. You have time to get away, make an escape. Electric Cherry as well to just help you stun the rest of the zombies around you and give you enough time to get out and find your hole and to get to the next point. Everything they added into this map worked in unison together from the tomahawk being able to upgrade it and even grab drops with it in tight situations where you might possibly need it. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't name a single other zombies map where you can get out of a clutch situation by grabbing a nuke 30 feet away by just chucking a tomahawk. Is it badass? Absolutely. Is it necessary to go far? Absolutely. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now going down on Mob of the Dead is like no other map. When you go down, your game may seem over, but with these afterlives in your favor, and if you use them correctly, like I was saying earlier, it is very hard to lose your game. So here is a prime example right here. Now in the gameplay, it shows one of the fastest strategies that you can possibly do on Mob of the Dead. And when Brutus spawns right here, it can get kind of hectic at around this time because of the fact that the wonder weapon is starting to lose its power which means that you're going to have to figure out other ways to kill brutus which is obviously going to just be your tomahawk now this is my first down of the entire game i used all my afterlifes very wise in the beginning but brutus is also coming in right now with all these zombies in my way and right here i'm just gonna take an instant down because the game is so fast it is very hard to keep up but you got to be able to just assess the situation and you know gain control around you which is what mob of the dead allows you to do i mean i'm despawning zombies despawning brutus giving myself enough time to make a hole and cut right through it and try to get to juggernaut it can be really difficult if you rush this process because zombies will start to spawn in front of you. But with me despawning them, it's not killing any of them, so they're all going to be spawned behind me right now. Also, you're always going to want to have your tomahawk cocked and ready to go just in case. Corners like right here, this staircase, it can get really sketchy. And the blunder gap without it having the speed colon electric cherry can be you know, very risky, especially without Juggernaut as well, because you're going to take damage from not only the zombies possibly, but the Wonder Weapon, because it does self-inflicting damage. But since I didn't really have to do any of that right here, I make my way back to Juggernaut safely, and then boom, happy as can be, using the Vitrolic Withering to my advantage to buy myself some time. Mob of the Dead is truly an iconic map. Now, although it's not my personal favorite, I just consider it to be 
amazing for what it did for the community and for its time. I'm sure a lot of you can think back and remember even playing split screens with your younger brother or older brother, having the time of your life which is exactly what I do when I think of playing this map. So there is a nostalgic factor to me. What about you guys? Overall though, Mob of the Dead can be seen on many top five zombie map tier lists of all time for many, many reasons. I can sit here and talk about the map all day long, but I would also like to hear what you guys have to say. I am definitely new to this whole YouTube scene as far as creating and editing videos and I'd love to start and create my own community on here with the games that I love the most. I like to play all kinds of games, especially ones that take a little bit more skill to play. So if you got any suggestions of things that you think are a challenge and you'd love to see somebody get good at, I'm your guy. I love a challenge. If you got a challenge for me, throw it at me and let's see what we can do. There's nothing more satisfying to me in a video game than grinding your way to the top of the level that it can be played at. There's one thing that I know for sure how to do in life and that is work hard even if it is at a freaking video game. I'll let the video play the rest of the way through. Thank you guys for watching if you made it this far and until next time my friends. When it comes to zombie storyline, I give zero shits and I do not care about any Easter eggs.